Welcome to the Cynical Magazine podcast. My name is Danny Stygian, and I'm the publisher of Cynical. This is episode number 12. Today's guest is Ladella Hahn. She's a fetish and pinup model. She's appeared in the magazine multiple times, including three covers. She's been a supporter of the magazine for over five years, and I've always appreciated her support. Anyway, let's jump into the interview. Can you tell our listeners how you got started with modeling? Sure. Um, so I started modeling way back in the day. Um, <laughs> when I before before I even turned eighteen, I knew that when I turned eighteen, I wanted to be a suicide girl because that was a big thing back then, and I was into you know alternative culture, and um, so that was my start was me wanting to do that or the reason I wanted to start modeling, um, and then I didn't do that instead I actually modeled for a different company that didn't have the the contracts that suicide girls had um and I was doing that just shoots like once every couple of months up until about the summer of 2009 when I decided to start actually creating a portfolio of creative work um and then in 2011 I moved to Boston and made modeling my full-time career but yeah it all (laughs) started <laughs> because of uh, suicide girls really or what, what was D1, the company D1. you shot for deviant nation oh, okay as a i was a different i went by a different name then what was nessie. the name nessie oh. nessie yeah <laughs> and uh how did your modeling evolve into burlesque and performing oh well um my background or i guess my artistic outlet when I was a a kid was dance and that was actually kind of why modeling seemed like a natural thing to do because once you you know hit a certain age there wasn't really as much dancing opportunities unless I were to go to school for it or something um so I started modeling which is kind of like dance and still form and um and then when I found out that there was a burlesque scene in Maine which is where I'm from um that, so it was about the same summer, actually, that I started modeling more frequently. It was the same time that I started performing burlesque, and that was the summer of 2009. Did anyone influence you when it comes to burlesque? Um, for burlesque, I, I would say it was more the music that influenced me than anything. And I think that just has to do with like my background in dance. I didn't actually watch other performers just because... Um, I wanted to develop my own style. Right. And uh, how did this evolve into your fetish video work? Um, <laughs> so I do fetish videos now, but actually before I started doing, so after around the same time I was modeling for Deviant Nation, I actually had started doing some fetish gigs while I was in college. Um, so I actually was already in the fetish world just under that you know different name, Nessie. Um, and he, one, one of the guys that I worked for actually is the one that got me to make a clips for sale account and like helped me start it up and everything like that. So I had already made one. I just didn't realize the income potential of it. Um, and I wasn't updating like very frequently or anything. And then I just let it sit there for a long time. And then in 2014, one of my model friends is actually the one that told me like, Oh, if you actually, you know, like you update that regularly like every day you can actually make good money and that came about because we were talking about how we were kind of sick of touring um and traveling around for gigs which is what you kind of have to do because it's if you're in the fetish or pinup modeling industry you can't really stay in one place there's not enough work so you have to do tours um but I you know wanted to be home more and and so we were talking about like other things we could do and that was a thing that she told me to try and she'd been trying it for a couple of months and that's why I decided to give it a go and that's what I do full time now <laughs> that's awesome how much uh, work do you put into your videos <laughs> a lot a lot of work um except for <laughs> except for this summer actually because I'm not I'm, I'm kind of not doing a whole lot this summer because of um house shopping All right but um a lot of, of um what I've kind of found to be my my niche in terms of of the fetish video work is I like to do videos that are kind of like little B movies and I do my own cheesy special effects and everything. Um, so I do it all myself, which takes a long time <laughs> to do. 
<laughs> so that's kind of like why I'm holding off this summer because I have so much else going on that it would just be extremely stressful to be also doing that on top of it because just to do like one 10 to 20 minute video that has special effects can take like two to three days, maybe more oh, wow. between okay. filming and editing. Editing. Uh, do any fetishes seem to stand out as far as being popular with the, the buyers? For for my own personal yes. stuff? Um, yeah, I mean, the, the ones that do best for me, which, like, it's obviously going to be, it's different for, you know, different models because you all have your own thing that you're good at. Um, but for me, my biggest categories that sell um, best for me anyway are Vore, which is, like, essentially cannibalism it's like either being eaten by someone or a monster or oh, wow. i'm the one eating someone else um which I've is never... obviously just done in <laughs> yeah you've never, never heard of it i've never heard of that <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that one's big and I, I actually like it because it's like i get to do it's more horror looking you know so if you like look at my videos um that i've done that are in the four category like if you went to cliffsforsale.com slash 360 C32, or just go to LiddellHanFetish.com and you'll find the link to it there. And if you could, you do drop down Vor, like my Vor videos are typically like more horror oriented, so it's kind of fun because I like to. I don't know. It's you know again, it's like a B movie. It's like a cheesy B movie sort of situation, but um, I like doing them because they have that kind of creepy horror quality. And most of the time, the ones that do best for me anyway are the ones where I'm eating other people. Um, and I either do it like with special effects which you can you can see in the animated gifs um or i do um like where i'm eating the camera so oh, wow. it's like a pov sort of thing um and then my other big selling category is me being brainwashed or hypnotized oh is that pretty big yeah it's it's pretty big like that one um which like i think i might be good at that just because i'm really good at doing the the dead eyes <laughs> like looking yeah. like the unblinking kind of spaced out look so there's like a lot of other um fetish niches that also use that that i've been really good at as well in terms of sales and it gives you a chance to do some acting yeah i think that's like really why i like doing it is for you know it's like like i said like i like make the whole like idea of like making making little movies basically so i tend to specialize in ones that have stories or storylines and i have I've done some simple videos that don't have a whole lot of story and I most of what I do is custom work so people contact me with their scripts but um, I'm more likely to want to do it if it has an interesting story and if it doesn't then I usually have to make up a story in my head or somehow incorporate it into their custom because it makes it more appealing to me if it's more like a movie. Has anyone contacted you with a script that you just didn't want to do? Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> There's a ton of... <laughs> A ton of them. And some of it is just like really impossible things that like I don't understand how they think anyone can make it. Like um, like it's ones that like I because I, I do a lot of cartoony type work. I think just I, I mean, I've been told that I'm kind of like a cartoon. So I don't know if that's why. But people, <laughs> people contact me with a lot of like cartoon recreation ideas. And maybe it has something to do with like, the fact that I do a lot of character work and cosplay, too. But there's some ideas where it's it's like taken out of cartoons, like, you know, like Jessica Rabbit. Donald Duck cartoon. <laughs> no, not even Jessica Rabbit. Like, I mean, like silly stuff, like getting stuck in a floor, like falling through a floor and being like stuck halfway between a floor and a ceiling. Like that's, that's one that someone wanted. Like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm like and I, I actually saw like, um, another producer do it. He actually did it, but it was because he owns like a big prop warehouse. So I think he had the ability to to do something like that but most people don't have the ability to do something right. like that um but that's just like one little example there's actually a ton of cartoon ones that people contact me with but i mean they're basing their ideas off of things that happen in two-dimensional cartoons that usually involve a lot of like pain or bizarre props and things that a normal person doesn't have in their home so a lot of those ones i just even as funny as they might be i can't really agree to doing them just because of the amount of work that it would be for me to try to somehow recreate that idea and get these props and do all this and and not know that it's not going to you know to sell to the to the general public because very few people are going to want to see this one cartoon idea right. um however i have had some that have done well it just depends on what the main subject of it is i suppose 
and then the other reason I would deny deny a custom is just because of um it's beyond my limitations like I don't do explicit sexual content like I don't <clears throat> I'll do full nudity but not in a sexual context so I have like kind of particular limits in regards to sexuality so if something's beyond my limitations then I have you know I have to decline or I'll tell them that and then they'll usually modify it so that it's within my limits right do you have a favorite clip that you've produced um yeah and again they're typically in the war category I think it's because they're like the ones that I put the most work at like I mean there's one that I released that um was different than the regular vores. It was like an absorption thing where they, he wanted me to have, um, like the storyline is one of my model friends, um, Nixon. I I think you know her. Um, she was supposed to be like an obsessed fan of mine that, um, what is like an alien creature and she wants to become me. So she absorbs me into her and then turns into a giant form of me. But, But yeah, they, you know, they contacted me with this idea when I mean, they wanted this like absorption of effect and I had no idea how I was going to do it. So I gave them a highly discounted rate just because I was intrigued to try, but I didn't want to charge them what I felt, you know, because of not being confident about my ability to do, to do it. So I gave them a discounted rate on it. Um, and be, in exchange for that, they had to be okay with me taking as long as I needed. So it took, it took a long time. Um, to do it but when I finally like got it done I was you know I was actually like excited about it yeah exactly just because because like I guess you know the harder or the more work you put into it the more proud you are of the the outcome and so that one I actually that one's called consuming obsession um was the name of that one um and then another one that I was really proud of which was also a vore and that one actually is nominated for one of the Fetish Con Awards, um, was Snow White and the Seven Vores. And that was like, obviously, it's a, you know, a cosplay parody type thing where I'm Snow White and I eat all of the dwarves <laughs> over the course of being like um, of a snowy winter, basically, where I become, I eat a poison apple that basically makes me ravenous. And then I eat all of the dwarves one by one. Knocking them off. It sounds funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, it has some like cheesy effects, and but it's also like has this cool horror element to it too. And I, it gets a, you know, like that one had more of a complicated development where I start out as like sweet Snow White, and then I turn into this kind of like ravenous monster basically, Cannibal. and then I get huge by the end of it. That's the other part of it is the more you eat, the bigger you get. So that they want you know I had to be like huge by the end of it, and I have like. Um, like I have a lot of props that help with that, basically. And what uh, social media platforms do you use to promote your photos and videos? Um, so I typically have post different types of things on different places. I'm not very great at social media. I'm actually pretty horrible at social media. But um, you know, based on like Facebook is pretty prudish in terms of content so I feel like basically I'm like afraid to post anything that's even fetish related or anything that promotes my fetish work um and especially with their like base they seem to give lower priority to anything that has certain keywords in it like they'll just like hide it from people I've noticed um so you can't really promote yourself at all on Facebook, unfortunately. <laughs> anything that promotes anything, they seem to block. Um, so Facebook is just kind of like turned into this thing where I just post selfies a lot because that seems to do the best for me on Facebook. Um, and then Twitter is where I actually post most of my fetish work just because it's allowed. Like you can post nudity and like, you know, th- there's a big fetish community on Twitter. That's like the the big place for the fetish community. Instagram is kind of a mix between the two where there there are some fetishists on Instagram, but still I have a, um, a lot of non-fetish and all ages type fans on Instagram. So I try to keep Instagram fetish free for the most part like I might post like a behind the scenes type thing but I you know I don't really direct link to any of my fetish work on there so again you know both Facebook and Instagram are kind of just places where I post things that are more 
real life or, or well, I guess Facebook, I don't even really post as much as I do on Instagram. That Facebook is essentially just pictures of myself because that seems to be the only thing that people care about on there. Instagram, I like will post other things. But the big one that I'm most interested in right now is actually Snapchat. I don't know. Are you on Snapchat? No, I'm not on Snapchat, but I know everyone's that, using it. Yeah, it's become really big. And it's interesting. It's really interesting because like, at first I didn't really see the value in it because you can't actually promote things within – like you can't promote – or market yourself within Snapchat. You can only get people to your Snapchat through other forms of social media, which is really interesting that yeah. there's no like way to promote or market within Snapchat. However, I love the candid nature of Snapchat where like it's just most people post just quick little 10, you know, it's just 10 second videos. So it's just little 10 second videos. And so I'm more likely to post more openly and candid parts of my life on there because you don't have to feel like it's cluttering up your regular stuff because everything disappears in 24 hours anyway. Yeah. So Twitter's the main one. Twitter's the main one for fetish work. Yeah. Um, I, I recently shot Jasmine Mendez and she said you make your own costumes for uh, conventions and cosplay yeah. events. Can yeah. you talk about that? Yeah, sure. Um, I am a piecemeal cosplayer. I'm not particularly um, talented in terms of sewing, unfortunately, although <laughs> if I had ever had a chance to actually learn from my Nana, she was amazing at sewing. And, um, so I am a novice in terms of sewing ability. Um, so a lot of what I do is I like take parts, like I find existing things and then I modify them to make it into what I need. And then I'll make parts of it. Um, from scratch. There have been some costumes where I've made them entirely from scratch, but they have to be more simplistic in nature. I can't do anything that's too crazy myself. Um, so a lot of what I do is kind of more like arts and crafts style, but it's fine, I guess, where like, it, like it tends to like look pretty good in photos, but, um, like if you were to like really inspect it up close, you'd be like, oh, okay. <laughs> like <laughs> I can see how she did this. This is just like a piece of foam that she painted and glued here, you know, like things like <laughs> things like that but you know it works for for what it is and I, I think it's like good to have cosplayers of like all levels and abilities because it kind of also shows that anyone can really do it you just have to be creative and you know not everyone is a, an expert um in, in sewing so you know anyone can do it you don't have to be an expert you just have to think creatively of how you can do it without having to sew things <laughs> do you go to any uh consistent events every year um, I just came back from San Diego Comic Con for my second year, which I said was going to be my last year, and I lied because I probably will go back next year for <laughs> for the last time. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and Fetish Con is my other major big one. I go every year. Um, I've done the AVNs a couple years, but I'm probably not going to be going back this year because I'm doing a cruise in January instead, and I don't think I could do both in the same month. Right. And uh, my last question is, do you have any upcoming projects or events you want to mention? Um, I, I think like, like, like I told you before, before we got on, um, house hunting has really been consuming my life recently. So I've actually like put a ton of things on the backlog, including my, my own work, um, which has been kind of minimalist at this point between all the other travel I do. Summers are kind of hectic. Um, so in terms of events, I guess the only upcoming thing I have, I don't know when this is going up, but, um, um, and f for, f for podcasts, I guess I know it's going up in the interview, but, um, I'll be performing, um, at fetish con Saturday night after party at the castle in Tampa, Florida. Um, they're doing a sci-fi themed show and I'm actually going to be doing a robot routine which is actually also one of the categories that i do well at on culture sale <laughs> so it's kind of like a, an interesting robot fetish video uh Sounds video cool. about live <laughs> um and then in terms of travel i think most of the travel i have coming up outside of fetish con is just going to be personal travel right. so yeah well, i'll put this episode up before the fetish con okay <laughs> and uh thanks again for shooting these covers i think this is your third cover yeah yeah thank you for having me <laughs> and uh, i appreciate your support of the magazine over the years yeah it's kind of actually crazy how long it's been and time flies by 
<laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> six years now, yeah. Yeah. Well, kudos to you for keeping it going and developing a style that, and obviously a lot of people are seeking cynical out now, so that's really cool. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll keep it going until I die, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for having me.